You're watching WMCM Student TV, broadcasting from the Wing Technology Center at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, featuring sports, news, game shows, movie reviews, interview shows, and what the students are thinking about. Campus Channel 6, Charter 989. Your campus, your station, WMCM TV. A meltdown in the mile high, more NCAA insanity, and a champion is crowned in Kansas City. Sports Scene is up next. It's coming. I promise. Welcome into another edition of Sports Scene. It's me, it's me, it's LJB, and I am joined by two of the smartest sports fans that are going to take a little bit of sports talk to you right now. Well, I'll introduce here, that's Logan Betty, if you don't know, I'm Joey Olson. I'm Hayden Nautigal. And today we are going to start things off. Horrible thing for us as Packer fans on Sunday. It totally was a meltdown in Denver. Guys, tell me, what are your thoughts? You know, on Monday when you wake up after a Packers loss, it only happens about four or five times a year, so it's always depressing. But, you know, it's a good wake-up call, I think, for the Packers. I got what I wanted, uh, that seeing that I want to see us kind of face adversity once or twice, and I feel that like a lot of champion teams are going to figure it out. So I think that the, the loss was almost good for the Packers, but, of course, not in the way that it happened. It was, just, it was an atrocity. It, they just couldn't get anything going on offense, for sure. Uh, Randall Cobb, Devontae Adams, the rest of the team could not get, uh, get downfield, get any separation, and our running game wasn't there. It was just really sad to see. Um, hopefully next week we can get it changed up a little bit. I mean, they, they came out flat offensively. They came out flat-footed defensively. But to be honest, this is really nothing that we haven't seen before. You think back to last year. You go on a Sunday night game, you struggle in New Orleans, you get the pants beat off in New, in New Orleans, you bounce back and you succeed. Do you see that this year, or are there real issues with this team, judging by what you've seen on Sunday night? I saw on the defense especially, when Clay Matthews went off for that a little bit, I was kind of scared a little bit because we have no depth at inside linebacker. Although I would like to see what Jack Ryan can do. I feel like we need to bring in somebody Fourth else. Rounder. Yeah, exactly. See what he's got. I mean, Clay is an exceptional athlete. He's doing really good this year, playing multiple positions. I just think we need to get some more continuity on our off defense and see that our depth there, which we lack right now. It's players that we've seen make big plays are the ones that made mistakes, and that's why I'm confident that this Packer team is going to bounce back. Just like Mike McCarthy said, it's the first time that we've kind of gotten our butts beat in a while. Yeah. I won't use the term he used, but <laughs> it's not of the end of the world yet. Our flaws showed for sure, and with this Packers team moving forward, there's a lot of games that they have left uh, that are against quality opponents. You play the Vikings twice. You got the Panthers on the road next week. And really, it's something that you got to wake up to. Um, Rodgers, of course, only throwing for 77 yards. I don't see him having another performance like that. But the, f the fact is that there wasn't any vertical downfield threats. There wasn't anybody getting open. And I think it's something that I maybe we didn't do our work. We had our bye week, so did the Broncos. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it's something that you just move forward, move on. Any given Sunday mentality, you move forward. I thought coming out the bye week, our running game would come back. It just did not show up. Eddie Lacy still looked slow. Maybe the injury is still bothering him, which I don't see how it was. They said he can completely fine coming off it. And Devontae Adams, you would see him mid-route just like slow up. He was just like he, his hamstring's not ready. The one thing I think that bothers me most about this team is that there's always that claim of balance. This team, you know, Mike McCarthy always says we're going to have a balanced offense, we're going to have a balanced team, and you get down by seven points and immediately you <laughs> scrap the run. And another thing, you have Eddie Lacy, he's 250 pounds, that's being nice, and you want to run him outside, you want to pitch him outside, no. pound the ball up the middle, go in the I formation. It's so frustrating for me as a Packer fan to see them try to move him to the outside. 
And just just to wrap up, like I say, I think we're going to be okay. Packer fans, maybe not so much. It's going to be fine, folks. And, and we're just not used. You know, this doesn't happen all the time. We're yeah. used to the, being the team that does this, so it's a little, a little rougher on yeah. us. Well, we had another interesting week of NCAA <sighs> football. It seems every single week there's something crazy that happens. Oh, yeah. Before we get to some of the insanity, um, the top four for the NCAA is put out tonight. Fellas, who do you have in your top four to see the playoff this year in the NCAA? You're correct. The selection committee of Condoleezza Rice, Barry Alvarez, and Tom Osborne <laughs> Among comes out others. tonight. <laughs> comes out at six, but you can see our picks right here, and we're probably right. Our top four, right now I have Ohio State at number one. You win a championship, you haven't lost yet. What have you done wrong besides something else that happened throughout the week? Yeah. TCU at number two right now. Trayvon Boykin is one of my Heisman candidates. Although they have four tough games remaining, they haven't done anything wrong to give them a chance right now. I'll have LSU in at number three. Leonard Fournette is my favorite for Heisman right now. And I do have Baylor written down here. I know that they lost their quarterback, but you got to give Clemson a chance at the ACC, especially they have a big game coming up against Florida State this weekend. If they win, I think you give them a chance in. Although just look at ask TCU. It's only the last count that were mm -hmm. that matters um I would uh, have to go with Ohio State again obviously they're undefeated they had a championship last year and Clemson I Deshaun Watson's looking good has 20 TDs on the year with seven INTs which is not bad and the 70 percent completion rate which I really love as a stat and quarterback um, then I would go LSU four nets a beast having an awesome year 1300 yards plus 15 TDs and Brandon Harris is controlling the offense very well. You're not, they're not expecting him to throw the ball a lot. He's thrown nine TDs this year, no INTs. That is nine TDs and no INTs. I have That's to agree with awesome. you. I have Ohio State, LSU, Clemson, and TCU. I am on the Boykin bandwagon. This kid is amazing. He is going to be a top ten pick. He is one of the best wide receivers in college football right now. So you, you talked about 70% completion percentage. What a lot of these teams are doing is in college football, if you can take care of the football, you don't turn it over, more than likely you're going to win a lot of games. For sure. Without a doubt. And I want to make another argument here about college football and how great it is. You say there's insanity every week. And the month of November, if you want to argue about which sport is better, basketball or football, the month of November is your preliminary rounds. I just made a list of games. Listen to these games that have to figure themselves out in November before. You have Florida State versus Clemson and LSU Alabama this weekend. LSU oh, has two more road games after that going to <laughs> Ole Miss. Yeah. TCU plays Oklahoma. Michigan Ooh. State plays Ohio State. Baylor plays TCU oh on Thanksgiving. And Ohio State travels to Michigan, who has had an up year. And then the week after, you have to have championship games. And, of course, looking at the Big Ten, you have Iowa sitting yep. pretty at 8-0 mm -hmm. right now with the favorable schedule. The way out. There's a lot of teams that give themselves a chance, including a, a Notre Dame team, although with one loss, they're still right there. So, a lot of football to be played. One team we didn't mention, guys, Alabama, one loss. Yep. If they win the SEC title, they'll probably sneak into the playoffs. And, and they're at home against LSU this yep. weekend. Nick Saban, so, too. Yep. Born winners. All right, so we had a champion crowned in Kansas City. Guys, it was an entertaining World Series. You had a lot of comebacks. You had a lot of, you know, just interesting things going on. Guys, tell me what you think about Kansas City. Hey, congratulations to the Kansas City Royals, a sure. smaller market team that has been undermined by the St. Louis Cardinals for so long, and yep. it really makes me happy as a Brewers fan. <laughs> so how about congratulations to the Kansas City Royals. They were partying in the Light District all night on Sunday. The TV broadcaster was seen in the streets mm -hmm. smoking cigars. I always <laughs> say you got to celebrate like you won the World Series at least once or twice exactly. in your lifetime. So second time round, they get back. Just uh, congratulations to them, a young team that goes off, gets it done, and just an explosive, exciting team, like mm -hmm. you say. Um, it was a heck of a performance by uh, Salvador Perez, the catcher for the Royals. And he just, one big key to it, he outplayed his counterpart against the Mets. Denard, he only was 3 for 19 at the plate. And then we also had, well, Salvador went 8 for 22, 364 average. I mean, you take him out of the game, take him out of the series, and it's completely different to me. The thing that stuck out to me was that the Royals at the beginning of the year were the best team when the season started. They were the best team when the season came to an end. And this is, the Royals are kind of the epitome of what we as Brewers fans kind of wanted to see yep. from them. You draft your own guys, you build up your farm system, you retain these guys, and then when you get a, a nice stockpile, you trade them out for, for players that you can get. Yep. I, I call back to the Granky trade for them. You get Alcides Escobar, you get Lorenzo Cain. The 
Will Myers trade got them two pitchers back that really kind of vaulted them up into that playoff standing. Yep. So, I mean, really, if you're a young team and if you're struggling right now, I think the Royals are the team that you have to look to to really look to how to build your team. The Cubs are doing that now. Well, you, you see the Cubs' success now. They're building through their farm system. They have tons of guys. Baez didn't even play for the Cubs. They, he's a possible trade yeah, exactly. option for them. But the one thing that kind of worries me about Kansas City, you're a small market. Yep. How do you retain these guys? What do you guys think? I, I think a few of the Royals are going to be gone. Uh, Alex Gordon looking like a prime candidate, which we'll talk about later. He, he's going to be gone. Uh, I just don't see how they can contain these arms in the bullpen and like Wade Davis. Exactly it, too. I, I just don't see. Somebody's going to be offering big money, big contract at the end of the bullpen there. Joey, what do you think? Be before we go back, before we say, uh, move on to them, just the way that they won the World Series is, was Joy. absolutely exciting. The Mets were going to give them a run for their money as far as their starting pitching and guys like Matt Harvey. That, but they got it done their own way. They came back three times. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just the ex excitable base running. And maybe they'll lose some of those guys, but I think – they have a decent decent future ahead of them. And, it's and, always hard to win back-to-back. -back. And in the Royals' 11 uh, playoff games, they were tra trailing in eight of those. So that shows you that. 40 or more runs scored in the eighth and ninth inning as well. <laughs> so, guys, it's here again. Can't you feel it? It's the NFL trade deadline. Aren't you excited? What? Wait a minute. That's right. Nothing <laughs> ever happens in the NFL trade deadline except... Joey, we had a trade yesterday. Why don't you fill us in on what happened? Yes, Vernon Davis traded to the Denver Broncos. Vernon Davis, the beast tight end from San Francisco. Not If you have him on your fantasy team, maybe you're waiting for him to wake up a little bit. But I think John Elway, they had that celebration of Super Bowl 32. Sorry I even said it, guys. But, <laughs> oh, man. But anyhow, they have an undefeated team that gives Peyton Manning one more weapon. It's like they're throwing all their chips in a big trade. It, indeed, and maybe that's the only thing we might see in this tra trade deadline. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it totally helps out Peyton Manning, who looked like firing at all cylinders last Sunday night. I was very impressed. Um, they lost Julius Thomas in the offseason. Mm -hmm. You bring in a big tight end like Vernon Davis, that could bring back the same uh, effectiveness they had last year at this time. I think when you know you think of all the trade deadlines in baseball you think of the trade oh, deadlines yeah. in the nba exciting in baseball no salary cap in basketball you have a lot of leeway mm -hmm. with the cap and how that works in the nfl you one you have teams that are not really keen on trading their draft picks away because they are so valuable in the nfl and two no one wants to take on any excess money a lot of these big names that you hear the joe thomas is the vernon davis is the alex max of the world those guys are getting a lot of money, and they are going to, the team trading them potentially is going to ask for a king's ransom in return. So I think that's the reason, you know, why we get yeah. a little underwhelmed when we talk about the NFL trade deadline. But, I mean, really, if, if you were the Packers, though, is there anyone that you would potentially look at to make a move? It just comes really down quick. to can you pay the guy and is it worth it? And also I want to point out that the NFL has a nine, nine uh, in week nine, uh, the NBA goes to February, the MLB is July 31st, two-thirds yep. of the season. All right, well, to figure out. well, coming up next, we are going to take a look at our beautiful campus, and then we'll be back for some NBA talk and Colin Kaepernick. Stay with us. At the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, surround yourself with potential. Surround yourself with lifelong friends. Step on campus and be welcomed with a friendly smile. It's just like home. Surround yourself with nature's beauty. Nestled in western Wisconsin's driftless area, it's perfect for learning. Hike the bluffs, bike the marsh, soar. Surround yourself with challenging academics. Our motto is Men's Corpus Gay, Latin for mind and body. Experience a whole education. Conduct research. Surround yourself with distinction. Surround yourself with UW Lacrosse. Welcome back. All right, guys. So the NBA started up last week. I'm a huge NBA fan. What are your impressions from the first week in the NBA? Who do you like? Who do you don't like? What are some surprises that you've seen? Well, on the 20th anniversary of the uh, Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan team that won 72 games, I actually noticed that SportsCenter, if you follow that on Twitter, is going <clears> to <throat> run through their season every day. There's another team that has a potential to win 72 games right now. That's out west in the Golden State Warriors. Stephen Curry is doing unprecedented things right now oh, for that team. and just The based god, Stephen Curry. Yes, <laughs> for sure. The thing that I enjoy about the NBA, too, is it, they say it's the biggest talent, the biggest athletes in the world, and it is, it is 
so true. <laughs> Everybody has their one star that they really cling to. Of course, uh, we see that the Bucks are finally seeing Giannis out of the Kubro. Oh. Grow in oh, from a 19 you. to 20 year olds old to having one of the best off seasons of the weight room. He looks like a grown man. Yeah, he is a grown man. He finally man. looks the part. I mean, he is Greek. He's the Greek freak for sure. Um, he had these two games he's played. He's had over 20 points and he's a double double the first night, I believe. And he's just looking like we were discussing earlier, Logan. He's looking like he is leading that team. He's just showing everybody who he is right now. Not only that team, but when you watch the Bucks games. And you see Giannis out there on the court with other teams. He looks like the best player on the court. It doesn't matter who, who they're playing. In these four games, he has looked like, well, three games that he's played in, he's looked like the best player on the court. And that is, I mean, for me being a Bucks fan who I never really jumped off the bandwagon during the doldrums, which have oh, been God. a large part of my life. Curb and to years. see finally see some guys like Giannis, Jabari Parker comes back on Wednesday, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know that their record might not be what everyone kind of expects, but they are going to be so much fun to watch. Giannis is young. Jabari is young. They're finally doing what they should do and build through the draft, and I, I couldn't be more excited. Um, I actually, one other thing from the NBA right now is the Rockets. Mm -hmm. They're starting out real slow. They have James Harden. Then you also have Dwight, Dwight Howard there. Like, mm -hmm. how are they not start? They won in three right now. They should be better than that right now. Plus, they drafted Sam Decker. Don't you think that should mean anything? <laughs> he hasn't had a lot of playoff time yeah. as well as Frank yeah. Kaminsky. But uh, the small markets, of course, we saw the Kansas City Rolls, a small market franchise win. Just seeing these small market franchises just have a chance is something that really gives me hope moving into the future as the NBA goes on in this Buck season as well. Definitely something we'll probably be talking about all throughout this season. So, guys, another big thing dropped. <sighs> yesterday. Yes. Colin Kaepernick finally benched. What does this mean for the San Francisco 49ers? What does it mean for the, you know, what we think of NFL quarterbacks in this league when a guy who gets paid as much as he does is getting benched like that? Um, one year doesn't make the man. Mm -hmm. That's going to say that. Um, looking back at his first year, like he played like half the year. That was the year that he went off. He was, uh, had 1,800 yards passing like those t 10 games he started. He had 10 touchdowns and three INTs and two fumbles. I mean, that's still not that great. Then you go to now, he is only completing less than 60% of his passes. He only has six touchdowns and five INTs and a fumble. He's just not doing anything for that team. The NFL is definitely a what have you done for me lately exactly. type of exactly. league. And the Giants, excuse me, the 49ers haven't had a successful year so far, as well as they have a 2-6 and six record. And at this point, why not? <laughs> Why not give somebody else a chance to, to succeed? Maybe some valuable playing experience, and maybe you see Kaepernick getting traded away at the end of the year. I will tell you why not. Why not is because Blaine Gabbert is going to be your replacement. Blaine Gabbert didn't really show much of anything. He was the number three overall pick in Jacksonville. Oh, yeah. Couldn't do a thing. In San Francisco, I mean, I, I just don't know. I think, you know, you gave Kaepernick the money. It's, it's, it's really hard to say. I mean, you can't continually have him out there. There was a play on Sunday where Kaepernick had wide receivers to the left and right, wide open. He was too afraid to throw it, and it, it, it was an option for him to do. He could either throw it or hand it off. Wide open, he decides to hand it off for a negative, yet, uh, negative gain. It's just he doesn't have the confidence. Exactly. Like, if you don't have confidence as a quarterback, like, how did he start out with that good and then come to this? Mm -hmm. It just does not add up to me. It's almost like with Kaepernick, his play is essentially a microcosm of what San Francisco has been since they've essentially jettisoned everybody. Jed York, oh. the owner for the 49ers, has essentially created a culture that does not breed success. You get rid of your coach who's having success in Michigan. Yep. You lose Patrick Willis, one of the best linebackers in football. You, I mean, you're just getting rid of guys right, left on. and right. And then you hire this coach that has... No experience, essentially. He was a defensive-oriented guy, right? But yet, at the end of the day, Super Bowl 50 is in their brand new Levi Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got one thing to be <laughs> happy that. about, you I guess that's that. it. So, guys, one of the less talked about things over the weekend, but I still think is, is pretty important, Brian Kelly this weekend got into an altercation with a coach. Why don't we take a quick look at that? I mean, you know, it just does not it's, look good. I mean, it doesn't look good. He comes over. I don't know what happened, but he's over there, and he has to be taken away by another one of his coaches. I mean, it looked pretty violent. And, you know, you always hear this talk. What was it? Last week, you have a guy for Dallas getting into an altercation with a coach, and it's mm -hmm. totally blown up. 
I, my question is, is there a double standard when it comes to coaches doing this sort of thing to players doing this sort of thing? You can go for it. I, you know, I think at, at the end of the day, it's going to be fine. Brian Kelly goes and under talks it in the post-game presser that saying he's he was avoiding a 15-yard penalty yeah. for Notre Dame. I think he's going to be okay. The, some notes I have written down, it was in the heat of the moment. He apologized for it. I think he move on. And it, maybe it's as simple as that, or maybe it's an underlying culture that might be uh, going on at Notre Dame. And that's something I think uh, those Irish need to figure out. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to be okay. Um, I just, speaking from a coach uh, standpoint, I'm actually a coach for my high school team, my old former high school. <laughs> and... I've been in this situation before. You get really amped up about a, a penalty being called and, or some play, and you think you see something, and the head coach comes and pulls you aside, gives you a little, gives you a little something in the ear there. But yeah. <laughs> that's just a little too much for me, shoving the coach for showing him up. My thing with it is this isn't Kelly's first time getting yeah. into altercations with for people sure. on his own team. He's been notorious. He's been known for... You know, he's had altercations with quarterbacks. He's had altercations with players. He's had altercations with sideline interviews. So, I mean, this, is, this isn't something that, you know, really is new to them. And I think because it's Notre Dame, it kind of gets passed over. They're really popular. People really like Notre Dame. You don't really want to talk bad about them. But, I mean, I think when you look at the potential double standard there, I think that's an issue. I mean, you can't – and I, I, I know that you have the Kraken, and he's been involved in a – litany of horrible, horrible things. He should not be playing in the NFL, but I think when you look at it through that scope, it's still, it's still kind of ugly. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. All right, so coming up next, we have some free agents have been announced in the MLB. Guys, a lot of arms hit the free agency market. Who do you like? Who don't you like? There was a list of 139 free agents, <laughs> yes. not just pitchers, but wow, some of the, there's a lot of big names out there, David Price being one of them, Zach Greinke being another. And as a Brewer fan, I say, okay, who can you maybe pick up for a, a couple of years? And oh, the, there's five that I listed here, actually two of them being former Brewers, the ones, arms that have impressed me, Jeff Samarja being one of them, mm -hmm. uh, someone that's been around Chicago, Gavin Floyd is another person that you could pick up for cheap, Giovanni Gallardo, maybe a little bit more, Mark Bollery, maybe somewhere, someone that could have a late career, and then also Marco Estrada was another free agent for the Blue Jays who pitched a fine year this year for the Royals. Who do you guys like? Um, I like the big three coming, the big three arms, Zach Greinke, David Price, and Jordan Zimmerman. Um, I think Jordan Zimmerman actually is the better of these three. He's the younger, younger version of them. He has a live arm, and he just looks like a pitcher on the mound. You want him pitching in big games, and I think the big teams are going to go after him. One thing for me was that you have a lot of, I don't want to say top guys or lower tier guys, but you have a lot of pitchers that are your you know, second guy, your third guy, your fourth guy in the rotation that a lot of teams are pro probably going to be looking at. You mentioned a few of them, Samarja, Iwakuma in Seattle, Giovanni yeah. Gallardo, Kobe Lewis, Scott Kazmir. I mean, Scott he's been a guy Kazmier. who's been hanging on by the skin of his teeth the last couple of years, but he has really helped a lot of teams. He helped Houston. He, when he, I mean, you know, he did... Towards the end, he struggled off, but for them to make the push to make the playoffs with the team that they had a couple years ago, he was a big part of that push. One name that I wanted to bring up that we had not mentioned is Jonas Cespedes. Yes. This has been a guy who the past couple years has helped teams make their playoff pushes. In Oakland, one of the key guys. Boston, one of the key guys. Now with the Mets, you saw how important he was mm -hmm. for them to make the push. Where do you see him going? Do you think teams should spend what we've kind of heard that uh, might be spent on him? I, I definitely think that he should be getting big money. He might be going back to the Detroit Tigers. Yeah. Rumors heard. I, I think that's a good sp uh, spot for him. It was a good spot to begin with, but Detroit just doesn't have the arms to compete with everybody. You want to assess for this? Probably. There's one name that I would be very, very scared to pick up, and that's some of the same New York Mets team, and that is Daniel Murphy. I think lightning flashed in a pan for that man, having one of the best postseasons that we've ever seen. Of course, their team fell short, but... That's someone you might keep away. And the only free agent that the Brewers are giving away is Kyle Loesch. And to this point, we say, have, yes. get rid of him. Build Thank it you. young, baby. Build it young. All right. So coming up next, we are going to take a quick look at some perfect pets.
My name is Josie. I love being scratched underneath my neck and getting loved. I need a home. Hi, I'm Casanova. I'm practically fearless in the way that I'm not afraid to say hello. My name's Tyson. Be careful when you pet me. I'll start licking and giving you a little love nibble. I'm Autumn. I'm only eight months old, but they say I'm the sweetest and most snuggly girl ever. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. My goodness, I want to bring every single one of those home. Once again, the number for that is 781-4014. So guys, scary moment in the football world this Sunday. Ricardo Lockett took a oh. nasty shot, a clean shot, but a nasty yeah. shot, guys. How much do these type of hits concern you when you watch football? Obviously, Ricardo Lockett uh, had successful neck surgery. He's going to be out for the rest of the year. Obviously, our thoughts are, yeah, just yeah. the human aspect of the game. You see a big hit like that, laying unconscious on the ground, J just a oh. scary thing. And head injuries are such a touchy subject in the world of football, just scary even to think about. But I do have assured confidence that there's medical trainers, scientists working endlessly to figure these type of things out. And really from this talking head, all you can do is hope for the best of it and hope to see that the game does get safer in the future without taking away its excitingness. The human aspect comes into this so much. I, I was working at the time and I watched, I seen this hit come out of nowhere. And he, it was just, he was sitting there laying there lifeless. It was still, I was scared for him. It just kind of sent chills down my spine. I think, I think the thing that, that frustrates me the most is, you know, you see hits like this and then you hear players talk about, you know, well, Carlos Williams of the Buffalo Bills had a severe concussion. It's coming back and saying that head injuries really don't concern me that much. I need to play. I mean, for a lot of guys, this is their way to make money. I mean, this is their only, that's their way yep. out is to play football. And when you play such a dangerous game, I mean, that's kind of concerning. I mean, it's getting to the point for me, I mean, I love football, but it gets to the point where does the entertainment value outweigh the human aspect and the concern mm. that you have? Like, these guys are killing themselves now, now for you, our entertainment, now, essentially. Now you understand why they go for those big contracts, because yeah. the, it's like an insurance policy, pretty yep. much. Like, you don't know when your last play is going to be. You could get, like, yeah, that happened. He could be done for the rest of his career. It's a scary thing. That's why whenever I hear about free agency negotiations for players, do whatever you can, get all the money exactly. you can, because you have such a short span to get whatever you can. All right, guys, so FaceTime. Joey, why don't you hit us with what you got? All right, so in the World Series, there's a man that wears orange and a <laughs> brim hat that comes to every game, and that is, of course, Mr. Leahy, the Marlins man. The Marlins man, a law Someone that works in a law firm travels to almost every exciting big game of the year. He'll walk around, take selfies with fans, and also one thing that I commend him for, he goes out and buys 30 tickets per game, hands them out to people that maybe for a seat upgrade or for people that are just tailgating and don't have seats. So, uh, Mr. Marlins, man, I tip my cap to you, sir. <laughs> and my topic will be the new Brewers GM. Uh, David Stearns is coming in. It's going to be a new. It's going to be reviving the organization, which is well needed. I, I just didn't like Doug Melvin. I thought this hire for David Stearns was perfect, and he's bringing his assistant with him from Houston. It's looking great. And one quote from him that he came, uh, the other day, I wouldn't have come here unless I thought it was possible to win a World Series here in Milwaukee. That's just, that just livens me up so I mean, much it, as a Brewer fan. It kind of, I mean, and we expect as Brewers fans, it's not going to be a quick fix. Exactly I thought it was not. kind of interesting when they hired him. It just so happened to be the assistant GM in Houston. You yep. make that big trade. With, with Houston exactly. for Gomez to get a lot of prospects. I mean, is, he, is must, that, he loved those prospects, obviously. That's why he wanted to come back. He's like, that maybe Phillips is like the next big thing. He was a big part of that trade. I remember hearing on a talk show about a few years ago saying, are, could Brewer fans muster the comeback of like the Cubs nature of what they're doing, the restructuring of them? And after seeing what they did in the postseason, how excited everybody was there in Chicago, yeah. I say, heck yeah, baby. Yes, bring that back. My, my thing is to you Brewers fans out there, be patient. Don't yep. give up on this team like you did with the Bucks. They need your support. Don't exactly. be known as one of these bandwagon teams that, oh, they're good, so we're going to buy all these tickets. I remember as a kid going to Brewers games, 
You could sit wherever you want because no one went. Don't do that again. Be patient. Stay with this team. So we want to thank you guys for hanging around with us on Sports Scene for some wonderful sports talk. Guys, I think the sports talk was pretty good today. Do you think the sports I, talk was oh, pretty good? I thought, I thought it was awesome. I <laughs> love the sports talk today. So we are going to wrap it up, and we will see you next time. A lot of exciting things going on in the sports world. That's for sure.